Hey guys, Harsh here, back in the video. So as you can see, my ESP is flipped around. So let me just flip it back up. So as you can see in this video, I'm going to show you how you can use an ESP8266 Node MCU module. This is the full name of this module, by the way, and use it to control an LCD display so that you can print some numbers and text on it. So this is a pretty fun project. We usually don't use the ESP and the LCD together, but in some cases you might need it. So without wasting time, let's get started. So first up, we'll obviously need our ESP8266 board and this is the Node MCU version. So the actual ESP8266 is just uh, this small board over here, which is, as you can see, soldered onto this uh, larger PCB so that uh, we can easily program it and connect the GPIO pins with it. And it is also written at the back. You can see it is written Node MCU. So this whole unit called the Node MCU with the ESP8266 module. Then we will use our LCD screen and this is a 16 by 2 LCD display, which basically means that it can print 16 characters in a row and it can print total of rows in total so first row and second row and these are basically the columns so number of columns will be 16 and the number of rows is 2 along with it we get an i2c board and this basically just makes the connection between the lcd and the node mcu a lot simpler you only need four wires for the connection but let's say if you don't have this then you will need to connect each of these individual pins to the node mcu which will be a very tough job to do and obviously you will need some external components such as a potentiometer which is as you can see baked right into the PCB over here and then to connect it all we will need some jumper wire as well so now let's see how we can connect it first on the LCD we can see we have ground and VCC so these are the power for our LCD display so we'll connect the ground to the ground on the node MCU and it doesn't matter which ground you're gonna connect it to any ground they all go the same way so as you can see I have connected it right over here then we will connect the V in pin which will be the voltage input or the VCC in this case and that will be connected to the V in pin on the ESP8266 and the reason why I'm connecting it here is because uh, it can directly take the power from the USB once we plug it in into the computer so we don't have to rely on the 3.3 volts on the Node MCU but you can still power this LCD with the 3.3 volts but sometimes when you are connected other components as well it may fluctuate or give a very dim sort of text because it doesn't have enough power now we'll connect our data pins which is the SDA and SCL. So we'll first connect the SDA pin to pin number D2 on the ESP which is right over here and D2 I think is the GPIO pin number 5 and then we'll connect the pin SEL with GPIO pin number 4 which is D1 over here as you can see. And that is it for the connection. We have now connected the ESP with our LCD display. So now all you have to do is just upload the code and test if it works or not. We will add our e ESP board extension. So we'll go ahead and click on file and then click on preferences. So this will also open up this small window over here. And in the additional board manager UI, you have to paste this link. I will give it in the description. You can copy it from there. And all you have to do is just paste it over here and then click on OK. Then go to tools, then select boards and then boards manager. This will also open up this small window and what you have to do is just scroll down at the very bottom and search for this particular file, the ESP8266 by ESP8266 community. And I have already installed it, but uh, in your case, it will say something like this install. And once you click on it, it will take around two to three minutes to install because it's a pretty big file and it will depend on your internet connection. And once that done, it's a fully automated process. All you have to do is go back or click the cross button. Okay, so first of all, we need to find the address of our I2C display. So for that, you first need to upload this code and find the I2C address and if you don't want to upload it just uh, try these two addresses over here so one is 0x27 and other is 0x3f so for LCD I think these are the only two addresses that uh, really work so you can try both of them and you just do a trial and error and see if both of them work or not but uh, if they both don't work then you will need to find your address with this code so just to go to tools select your board which will be the node MCU and as you can see, I've installed quite a few boards, so I have to scroll down very far away. So for me, the Node MCU 1.0 ESP12P model works perfectly, so I will select that. And then again, we need to select our COM port, which will be auto-selected for us, it, and it is COM5 in my case. Obviously, in your case, it may be a different COM port, but uh, that doesn't really matter. So once that's all done, we can just simply go ahead and click on upload and this will first compile the sketch and upload it to the board 
so now it says done uploading now we can finally open up the serial monitor and you can just uh, go to tools and open up the serial monitor just like so and this will print out our address which is 0x3f then you can just simply close this code because we don't need it anymore now comes the main code which we need to upload on our arduino so at the top there you can see i have included two libraries y.h and uh, liquid crystal i2c.h so y.h is basically inbuilt with your arduino id so you don't need to install it separately but the liquid crystal library you need to install separately and basically i have found out some library on github that uh, worked for me and uh, i have been using it since like i don't know like uh, four or five years and it has worked perfectly with every other board that i have worked with so i will just uh, add the zip file to the github repository as well so that you can download it as well and uh, if you have downloaded any other liquid crystal library then i would suggest you to uninstall it and then reinstall my library because sometimes it gets confused between the two libraries and still uses the old library now to install the library all you have to do is just go to sketch then go ahead and click on include library and then choose add zip library and then select the library wherever you have installed it now here we define a instance of the liquid crystal i2c library as lcd with the address of our i2c display and the number of columns and number of rows obviously if you have a larger display then all you need to do is just change the values here such as if you are using the 20 by 4 display you will just write 20 over here and 4 over here then here we initialize the lcd so that uh, the backlit of the lcd lights up and if anything previously was written on it it gets cleared up and then in the loop function we first set the cursor to 00 now if you don't know the basics of coding then let me just tell you that in sort of coding relevance we don't start with one we always start with zero so let's say i have a 16 character display so i will need to start it from zero and from zero it will all the way go to 15 and it will only go to 15 because we are including the zero value so we first set the cursor at 00, zero which will be top left corner and then we'll print the whatever name we like so as you can see it is a simple string with uh, double quotes then we set the cursor to the next line by this function over here, which is 0 1 so the column will remain the same the just the row will change so we we go beneath this and then we print our counter which is just a simple value which is being incremented by one every time we'll run the loop and obviously this is a loop function so it will continue on running and running and then we added a delay of 500 milliseconds which is half a second that is to just make sure that the arduino doesn't get overloaded with some other requests and then once all that is done we can just uh, select our board and com port again i think it's selected now so yeah it is and then we can finally click, go ahead and click on upload now that the code is finally uploaded we can test our code so let me just power it on via the usb cable and once i power it on then you can see on the lcd we get the text printed over here so that's pretty nice now sometimes what may happen is that you won't get any text printed on the lcd and you have double checked your connection double checked your code and everything looks normal and even after that the lcd doesn't print any text for that the main culprit is this blue box over here which is a potentiometer and the potentiometer is here because it controls the brightness of the LCD display. So let me show you, I have a screwdriver bit over here. So I'm going to turn it clockwise and you can see the brightness of the LCD changes to maximum and it is almost impossible to see any text. But if I rotate it in the anti-clockwise direction, then you can see the text fades away completely. So this may be happening to you, I mean the signal may be getting through but the brightness of the LCD is just so dim that you are not able to see the text. So do make sure that the potentiometer is turned up just at the right amount. So let me just rotate it clockwise again so that uh, the text is visible again. So as you can see now the text is visible again and you can see the counter is working perfectly with increments every half a second. So there you guys, you have successfully printed your text or number on a LCD display 
by using your ESP8266 node MCU board and this is especially useful when you are I think uh, connecting to a network and you can simply just print your IP address over here so that uh, the connection with the ESP is a lot easier for you so thanks for this video guys hopefully this video was helpful for you and I have provided all the codes and the circuit diagram in the description below so if you have any doubts you can check that out as well but if that doesn't work then you can leave a comment i will try to answer them as soon as possible so i will see you all in the next one